Good afternoon. So what you see here on the right side of the screen is pastel paper with my five bottles drawn just using a simple Sharpie marker. And I have some other permanent markers here, this big old fat guy from the 100 Yen store, and then this very small Sharpie. And the reason I might want to use all of these is so I can vary or change up the line weight. Now, most of the lines you see under the camera right now are of similar weight, similar thickness. But it's more interesting if you can vary or change up the weights. So the weight refers to the thickness of the line, and here we go. This big um, permanent marker here has what's called a chiseled tip. And the reason why it's chiseled or angled like that, so you can create lines of various width. For example, here, let me try it on a separate piece of paper. If I hold the <clears throat> tip in one direction as it, con as it contacts the paper, I get a very thick, bold line. I can duplicate that line, fill it in, and get something even bolder. So that's a very heavy line. This is thinner, not much. This, if I turn the tip around a different way, and draw it uh, angling a different way gives me a medium line in terms of thickness and this holding the uh, tip in yet another way gives me a thinner line now in addition to those thicknesses right there we can get still thinner okay that comes from this marker right here that one's getting a little dry and then finally in the ultra fine point which is so fine you can't even see it that little guy is dead but you get the idea the ultra fine would give you a very, very fine, fine line. Now this is variety. This shows slight changes or differences in line weight only. Not the type of line, but just the thickness of line. So we use that to build variety in our work. So here we go. In your work, I wanna see an emphasis on line weight. Later, with oil pastels, color blends and value gradients or color gradients. Gradient means that you move from a dark to a light through a range of values. So value, the lightness or darkness of your colors does make a big difference to your success in this drawing. If you look, you'll see areas where there's a transition of dark to light, 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 dark to light. And I wanna see some of that transition in your work as well, okay? We'll get there in just a moment. Meanwhile, let me go ahead and beef this up in terms of line weight. I'm gonna add an extra line there, an extra line there. Um, you notice how I turn the paper to get lines placed more correctly. I'm gonna correct that line right there. I can do some correction as I go or later on. Let's do this line here. That was a mistake, but I'm gonna build on that mistake to create that shape right there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, do this. So you see that I'm creating more visual interest just by playing with line, okay? And that's important. This is gonna curve around here. Now I might use the side of this. I might use that that, this, how am I doing? Let me put this big marker down and pick up this medium one. So this is all about line weight, line weight, line weight. Okay, I think I'm done. I probably could go on. It looks like this lower left side could use a little bit more of a bold mark. So I might do this. I might do this. I might just go ahead and color this whole area in. That'll be a very dark, very opaque surface. Opaque means I can't see through it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Correct that line there. Add this line here. Add another line there. Add this line here. Add this line here. Continue that one there. Okay, I'm ready for color. You can see that variation of line, thick and thin, gives me a lot more interest in this surface. Now, you're gonna be using oil pastel on this pastel paper, and you're gonna build your surfaces a little bit at a time. For example, I'm not pressing very hard. You notice how soft the pastels are. They come right off on your hands, right off on your skin. They're that soft. So when you press, you're pressing very, very, very lightly. And you wanna build your surfaces little bit by little bit. I can go ahead right now, while I'm using this very light pressure, and blend. There was blue, here comes red. 
red plus blue gives you, guess what, <clears throat> violet. So violet being a very, very dark value color, purple is dark, it's starting to get really dark right in there, okay? If I want to decide to turn this this way, maybe I'll introduce a yellow. Yellow, like blue and red, is a primary color. And you can see the yellow does warm things. It also deepens some of the uh, some of the areas where I already had some blue and red, which is kind of beautiful. Let me extend that yellow into this area. You notice that even though the oil pastels are nice and bright, they don't really hide the black line. So we're lucky that all this definition that we provided ourselves with line is still going to be able to show up. Now, yellow has a well, is an analogous color with orange. Orange is made with yellow. Orange is made with yellow and red. So here I go in with a little bit of orange. You notice that I am still thinking of terms of darks and lights. So for example, yellow is a light value. A nice light layer of orange gives me a darker value. Still more orange on top of that gives me a darker value still. And because orange has red in it, if I decide to put some red on top of that orange to deepen the values even more, I can very easily do that. Let me go over here with the red. You notice I'm very careful to keep it placed exactly where I want it. So there's some nice transitions, dark to light, going on right there. And so it goes, guys. With the red in my hands, I go ahead and maybe move it around to some other areas. No point in putting things down and picking them back up again when I can just use the same color, spread it around in different areas. Notice that I go very, very lightly, building the surface just very, very gradually. There is no rule on how to do this other than slow and easy and take your time. Now, this color that I'm gonna put on the red is kind of a neutral brownish yellow. So it's gonna drop the intensity of that red and it will give me an orange, but it's kind of a burnt orange, kind of a darkened orange. And that's not an interest, that's not a bad blend. I'm gonna do a little bit over here, and I might push that even darker still with a little bit of violet. Violet has red in it. Violet and red are related. They are analogous colors, okay? Well, I got the purple in my hand. I might move that over here, might move that over here. I can leave white on my paper. Matter of fact, I'd recommend you do some of that. Leave areas totally alone, totally white, but not too many large areas. Maybe some smaller areas, say, uh, for accent. For example, here on this finished example, there's a few white areas left open, a few white areas there, one here, one there, one there. But for the most part, everything is blended in color. So this is what we're after. This is my final example, my finished example for you. Remember, five vases. I'm looking for the mouths of vases, the necks of vases, the shoulders of vases, the bodies of vases, the feet of vases, if you can squeeze it in there. Any additional line work on top of those vases to add more visual interest to your piece. Use lots of weighted lines. Remember that the black shows up really good against white. So good, as a matter of fact, that if you make a mistake, you are stuck with that mistake. This is permanent marker, but there are ways of correcting mistakes. Let me make one right now so I can show you. Let's say I'm drawing a log. Can I make a mistake? Whoops, I made a mistake there. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide that mistake. See, there's the mistake right there. I'm going to come back around. That was my intended line right there. And I'm simply going to go carefully and fill in. And there I hid my mistake, okay? So it looks like a very dark shadow. Matter of fact, that's such a cool, thick, shadowed effect. I'm going to do it again. So sometimes your mistakes can turn out to be very, very useful. And I'm going to come out here and put that very strong dark shadow over here. And I might even do it down here. Okay, in a few places. So remembering that you can turn mistakes to your advantage if you take your time and imagine how to incorporate them into your work. Be sure and work slowly and carefully. I will see your mistakes if you make them. It's better now, midway through the course, that you learn how to slow down and show me your best abilities by being patient with your work, monitoring your progress all the way along. Now, you try.